Welcome back. Today we're going to walk through the alerting capability within LogMeIn Central, which gives us the ability to receive email notifications when certain events occur surrounding our host computers. Alerts are populated in alert packages, and like host preference packages or computer groups, can be assigned to a deployment package allowing for a more provisioned install. Also similar to host preference packages, a computer can only have a single alert package assigned to it at any given moment. Therefore, it is important that we build out our packages with all the triggers we would want on our computers. A well-provisioned account will typically have several alert packages, each one with specific alerts relevant to the primary function of the host computer. If we navigate to the Alert tab in our left-hand column, you will see four options appear. The Alert dashboard is primarily used for creating charts that give visual representation of the account's alert history. Charts in this area can be customized or created from scratch with specific parameters. The Alert Viewer displays reports relating to alerts and their statuses. These reports can be filtered, exported, or saved for future inquiries. The Alert Viewer is a great place to view acknowledged versus unacknowledged alerts, which will be explained later in this video. Our primary alert tab is the third option, Manage Alert Packages. Selecting this option brings us directly to a screen displaying any packages we've created, along with the last date and time the alert was modified or triggered, and the current status. This is also the screen we will return to when we wish to assign the package to specific computers. To begin with our first alert package, we're going to click Add Alert Package and enable the alerting capability of Central if prompted. All alert packages require a name, which I recommend tying to the function of the computer the package will be assigned to. For this demonstration, let's pretend the package we're creating will be assigned to a group of multifunctional servers. Here, we'll name the package Standard Server Alerts and click Add New Alert Rule. In the dropdown, we're presented with three pre-configured alert templates for workstations, servers, and kiosks, respectively. The remaining alert rules can be selected individually for creating your own custom package or modifying one of our templates. Let's select Server Template. Here, our template contains four of the alert rules we saw on the previous list, each outlined in a gray box. As we scroll down, I can remove an alert rule, say, Software Inventory, by clicking the X in the top right corner. I can also add a rule, say, free disk space, by selecting it from the Add Alert Rule button at the top of the page. Once I have my alerts configured, I click Save at the bottom to finalize the package. So what comprises an alert rule and how is it modified? To view this, we'll start with a common yet standard alert rule, CPU Utilization. Alert rules are comprised of three parts, a naming convention and explanation of how the alert functions, as well as if the particular rule is active or disabled within the package. The actual parameters, thresholds, or events that we wanted to be alerted of, and exactly what happens when the alert fires. For our example, let's say I wanted to be alerted when any particular CPU on my servers goes over 75% for a duration of 7 minutes. I make these changes to the threshold and duration here. By default, I will be sent an email when this alert is triggered, but I can also include the emails of other individuals, or possibly the email address of my ticketing software, should I use an email-based ticketing. I can also have an email sent to these addresses when the email is acknowledged, which we saw on the Alert Viewer page. An alert remains unacknowledged until a user logs into Central and acknowledges it in the Alert Viewer screen. So, if I have a team of IT technicians, I can set an expectation that the acknowledge of an alert will ultimately be responsible for its resolution. I can receive an email notifying the team when the alert is acknowledged and in turn, 
who will be handling. Should the alert best be resolved by a remote control session or viewing the inventory data, I can receive a link to this directly in the alert email. Any alert type that is based on a threshold will also have the option to send an email when the status returns to normal. Perhaps the alert was triggered by a failing process. If the system was to kill this process directly, I can receive an email notification that the CPU utilization is no longer an issue. Finally, we come to the most advanced capabilities of alerts, which ties our one-to-many tasks and is known as a self-healing alert. An alert can be used to trigger the task that we have configured in one-to-many, such as the command or batch file, registry change, or file distribution. By selecting this option, I'm shown the tasks I have configured in one-to-many and can select one to run when the alert is triggered. If you don't see this option, don't worry. It simply means you haven't created any one-to-many tasks yet. Check out the one-to-many videos for more information on creating tasks and task types. These self-healing alerts have a unique reporting area which granularly tracks history and execution. Check out our fourth item, self-healing alert history, to see this in detail. Each alert rule contains the same basic parts, and here I will walk through all of the remaining alert rules in their default status for review. Let's take a look. Computer. A computer alert notes a change in the online or offline status of a computer as it relates to log me in. Simply put, this means that our servers have lost or reacquired access to the computer. Memory usage. Memory usage detects when the RAM remains above a certain threshold for a certain amount of time. This alert type offers the return to normal status email. Free disk space. Free disk space alerts when a drive of your choosing falls below a certain minimum. You can use a set size in megabytes or gigabytes or a percentage of the total available free space. This alert type offers the return to normal status email. Folder size. Folder size alerts when a specified folder breaches a maximum size ceiling. This size can be set in kilobytes, megabytes, or gigabytes. This alert type offers the return to normal status email. File size. File size follows the exact same logic as folder size, only tracking a specific file instead of a folder. Application. An application alert triggers when a specific .exe file starts, stops, or crashes. This alert pulls from the list of running processes. Service Service alerts follow the exact same logic as application alerts, only pulling from the services.msc list. Hardware inventory A hardware inventory alert is triggered when a particular hardware component is added or removed. This includes service tag, processor, memory, drive, partition, motherboard, display driver, network connection, or miscellaneous hardware. Software Inventory A software inventory alert is triggered when software is installed or uninstalled from the machine. You can also specify if this includes updates to the software as well. System Inventory System inventory alerts similar to hardware inventory in that it tracks when the system components are added or removed. In this case, the components include Windows profiles, local users, or settings. Antivirus An antivirus alert is one of the most commonly used and can trigger when the antivirus settings are modified, turned off, out of date, undetected entirely, or when a red threat is detected on the machine. This alert type offers the return to normal status email. Windows Updates Windows Updates alerts will trigger when the settings of how LogMeIn performs Windows Updates changes. Additionally, you can receive alerts if there are updates pending. 
This alert type offers the return to normal status email. Windows Event. Windows Event Alerts are the most granular and offer the most flexibility of all the alert rules. In fact, alerts can be so specific that LogMeIn offers the ability to add exceptions to prevent unwanted alerts. Windows Event Alerts pull directly from the Event Viewer logs and enable you to copy event criteria to trigger an alert. Select the log and the trigger level and simply copy the details of the selected alert into the rule window. I commonly recommend using a Windows Event Alert in place of one of our other alert rules simply to make the alert more specific. Perhaps you want to know when an application crashes, but more importantly, you want to know when an application crashes due to a memory overload caused by another program. Here you can add both events as triggers and only be notified when both criteria are filled. A good rule of thumb for the Windows Event Alert. If you can find it in the Event Viewer, you can alert on it. Spend some time reviewing the alert rules to create the perfect alert package for your computers. Remember that only one alert package can be assigned to a computer at a time, so you'll need to create a different alert package if you don't want the exact same alert triggers on each computer. This can mean a great deal of alert packages. But don't worry. You won't have to start from scratch every time you wish to make a minor change for a separate computer. Let's return to our initial example of monitoring the CPU utilization on a group of servers. Say I wanted to keep this alert as is on half of the servers, but add an additional system service alert on the other half. Instead of creating a new alert package from scratch, I can export my existing package at the bottom, save it, import it as an entirely new package, and rename it. Now I merely add my service alert to the package and assign it to the relevant servers. For more information on central training, including feature walkthroughs and live demos, feel free to subscribe to this channel and check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.